guys, I'm not trying to freak you out, but I'm getting a lot of deals sent to me. You guys are giving me a heart attack. I want you to avoid closing on certain types of deals, which I'm about to go over. This is important. We are not in the same market we were a few years ago. On Investor Army, I'm trying to teach you guys how to create wealth and make money in real estate. But one of the best ways to create it is to not lose it in the first place. And a lot of you guys are about to take on some very risky deals. I've had to tell a lot of you guys, no, run away from that deal as fast as possible. I want you to understand that the market is not the same as it was before. Don't be watching videos on YouTube from 2014, 15, 16. You need to look at the date of these videos when you watch them. I'm hearing people say, well, I watched this video that said to go do this. And I'm like, okay, well, when was the video filmed? And it was like from four years ago. It worked four years ago, not right now when the stock market's diving. So let me give you an idea of one of the deals that I want you to stay away from. Vacation rentals and Airbnb properties, I would be very, very wary of closing on these. Now, I'm going to link another video at the end of this video. It's going to be up here somewhere at the end of the video that's going to break down some of the things that you need to think about as you buy these properties. And as long as the property is a strong cash flow rental property without the Airbnb numbers, you're probably okay. But if it's not and you're only making that property work because you're using Airbnb adjusted numbers, you're taking a very big risk right now. Look what's happening in the stock market. Trillions of dollars have been removed. Lots of money sitting on the sideline. Panic all over the planet. And we don't know what's going to happen. Y'all need to kind of keep an eye open. Uh, watch. This could blow over, but it could also not blow over. It could compound and become very bad. So when people lose a lot of money, do you think the first thing they want to do is go spend a whole bunch of more money and travel around on vacations? No. So if people don't want to go travel to vacations. What do you think is going to happen? Less nightly rentals. Uh, for your vacation Airbnb properties. Number two, when people are scared that if they leave their house, that they're going to go get sick because there's a potential uh, health crisis all around the planet right now, do you think people want to hop in their car, drive out into one of the most public, one of the most dirty places out there, which is the airport, where there's a high likelihood if they were to catch something, they would catch it there. Think about how many of you get sick traveling all the time. Do you think that people are going to be traveling as much to go to vacations when they know they have to get in, go to the airport? I mean, you're hearing statistics about the airlines losing $100 billion. You're hearing statistics about, you know, these flights that are always full, 100% occupied, having about one third uh, being taken up as far as people sitting on the flight traveling to different locations. That is crazy, about a third full. So think about this, guys. People are losing money, not likely to travel. People don't want to go out into public places like the airports to travel or in restaurants to spend money. So the first thing that gets hurt when there's a major market crash is always the travel industry. So think about this, guys. Don't be closing on property right now when you're headed into a potential uh, major health crisis as well as a potential uh, where we may have a major market crash. What's gonna happen if people stop traveling and spending money? Now, there's another property that I want you to avoid that goes hand in hand with this as well, <clears throat> which is higher end luxury rent, uh, higher end luxury fix and flip properties. You need to ask yourself if the numbers look good on this property before you buy it, ask yourself what would happen if you can't sell it. Is there enough room that you can rapidly reduce the price? How many active properties are in the, in the market that, uh, subdivision that you're going after? How many price reductions or uh, properties are currently up that you'll be competing with have, have they already had? You don't want to be putting a house on the market where everything's being rapidly reduced as far as price goes multiple times. You're seeing other properties have not just one, but two price reductions. That's a sign that that's a risky property to be taking on right now. Very low demand for that area. And you're going to be putting another piece of inventory on the marketplace. So look at the properties and make a big and really kind of uh, put a big conservative uh, guesstimate of what it would be as far as carrying costs outside the norm. So I want you guys to understand that it is very easy to get caught in the house and have six months extra carrying costs when you're in that high price point. Now, if you get caught in a property that you can't sell, what is the typical thing that happens? One of the typical things that happens is you become a forced landlord, meaning you finance out to save what you have in it and ride up the storm. But what if these properties are four or 500 K and when you finance out your negative cash flow, 12, $1,300 a month, and you've got five or six houses. What is the only thing else that you're going to try to do to not get yourself in one of those spots or to not lose all the gap funding that you have in those deals, which is you're going to become a forced Airbnb individual, which is going to throw more inventory on the market which is going to make it harder for Airbnb properties to be rented out, which means less nightly rentals, less rent. Also, you're going to have more competition in the marketplace. So you're going to have to make yours nicer, put more amenities in there, uh, you know, make sure they're even better than the competition. So higher costs on the front end to make them compete, more competition. So there's less nightly rentals while everybody's not traveling. So if you're going to be doing the Airbnb strategy, you're going to be doing, uh, going to be doing vacation rentals, 
really think about this before you close on the property, guys. I get it. It's exciting. You want to build your business, but you don't want to destroy your future.